will have the secretary read the notice for the public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Stafford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on February 13, 2018 at 7 p.m. the Warren Memorial Town Hall Veterans Meeting Room, 1 Main Street, <coughs> Stafford, Connecticut, 06076 to consider the following. Public hearings. Abishan Realty Company, Inc., 39 West Stafford Road, Map 47, Lot 18, Zone Highway Industrial. Special permit application to construct two retail structures totaling less than 20,000 square feet in the Highway Industrial Zone in accordance with Section 5.2, Line 16 of the Zoning Regulations and a temporary waiver of 21% of parking under Section 6.2D. At this meeting, interested persons may be heard and written communication received. Copies of legal notice and related information are on file in the zoning office of the Town of Stafford, Connecticut. Respectfully submitted, Nancy Rivetto, Chairman. This was in the Journal Inquirer, February 2nd, 2018, and February 10th, 2018. Thank you. The procedure for the public hearing will <coughs> will have the applicant uh, present at the application. Uh, secondly, then we will open it up for the discussion for the commission members. And thirdly, we will open it up to uh, discussion with the uh, public, any comments or suggestions or issues you would like to bring forward. At this time, I would like to establish a quorum. To my left is Kathy Bakiaki, I'm Nancy Rivetto, Ronald Hull, and, and Cindy Romo. I will ask that uh, Butch Clark sit in for Jean Julian, who is absent. So this evening, we have Guy has would you like to? Yeah, you know? thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the Commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Guy Hesketh. I'm a licensed professional engineer and principal at F.A. Hesketh and Associates. Uh, we're located in East Granby, Connecticut. We're here tonight uh, representing Albuchon Realty Company. Eamon Moran is also here uh, uh, as the owner. And we've got an application that we presented to you. That you accepted at your last meeting. If you recall, we were here a couple of years ago for an application similar to this one where we had a, a, over 20,000 square feet of retail proposed that included uh, restoring the existing retail building that's located where the old bus station was. And we had a larger building in the back here and then a small little uh, coffee kiosk or bank kiosk up in the front. And we also had access coming from West Africa Road. We had two drives, one in the rear for truck traffic and then another one about midway or so um, for the patrons. Uh, that application, um, the owner had looked for trying to get some tenants in there. It didn't pan out. Um, he has a, a tentative deal with a, another uh, retail establishment for this. So he's come back for uh, a new application before you. So it's, though it's um, Similar to the one that you had that we presented before was approved by this commission. It's smaller in total scale, and it includes uh, two retail buildings instead of the three that we had before. And it's significantly less of a footprint, as, as, and I'll explain to you uh, what the, the total um, disturbance of the site is going to be. So the site is located at 39 West Stafford Road. It's on the corner of West Stafford Road, which is here that runs uh, east and west of this move through 190 and Middle River Road, uh, which runs north from West Stafford Road. And what we're proposing is um, taking the existing 10,900 square foot building, that's going to be renovated, and that's going to be a retail establishment for the Aubuchon hardware. Uh, the previous application, we actually had a small addition, I think it was 2,400 square foot addition in the back. That's, that's now off the table, and it's going to be a total of 10,900 square feet, so that's adequate. And then we're looking at a, a 7,228 square foot auto parts store, which we're proposing in this area here. And um, the total area of the site is about 4.05 acres. It's located in your highway industrial zone. Um, we're requesting uh, approval for these, uh, these buildings here, which, and the associated site improvements, which is less than the 20,000 square foot um, your regulations, if you have over 20,000 square foot, it triggers a bunch of different um, considerations for approval. Since we're under that, we don't have that, that trigger for some of the other uh, requirements.
requirements for your regulations. So we're looking for an approval of these buildings, and also as part of our application, we're requesting a waiver of some of the parking spaces, specifically 21% of the required parking spaces. Your regulations under section 6.2 b <coughs> provide for a waiver, a temporary waiver of parking spaces, up to a total of 50%. And the reason for that is some retail establishments which, that are not parking intensive, there's no reason to develop a lot of the site just to have the parking if it's not really needed. Um, the regulations require a total of, it's shown on sheet LA1, a total of 73 spaces when you look at the total square foot and divide it out. Um, we've got a total of uh, 76 spaces proposed, but we're looking for a waiver of uh, a total of 16 parking, or 15 parking spaces, which is 21% of the 73 required. We're proposing the parking spaces between the two retail establishments, and then the waiver spaces would be uh, six located here along the uh, the western side, uh, northwest side of the of the Aubuchon. Another nine spaces in front of the Aubuchon um, for the total of the wave parking. Access is proposed through the driveway, a 24 foot wide driveway to West Stafford Road, Route 190, and that would be primarily for. Um, the patrons, automotive traffic, you may see an occasional um, small uh, vehicle similar to the size of a FedEx truck or a UPS truck. Uh, it's designed to handle an SU-30 vehicle, which is the size of a, a single axle small truck. The trucks for deliveries, the larger trucks will be entering the site by coming up Middle River Road and turning into the site. We provided in the rear a 100 foot radius that will allow trucks to do a, a 180 degree turn. So trucks can come in, they can spin around back into the loading area behind the Aubuchon and come up and either pull in or on the way out, pull into the loading area that's behind uh, the proposed uh, auto parts retail. So the loading spaces per your regulations are provided. Um, we are reducing the, the number of curb cuts on Route 190. Currently there's two curb cuts. There's one that serves the existing uh, residential home that's on the property. It's another large curb cut. I think it's about 55 or 60 feet wide. That serves the existing building that's there. We're going to close that one off, close off the one to the, uh, the house itself, and replace that again with a smaller 24 foot wide driveway. Um, we do have some dumpsters located. We've got one located here in the rear of Aubuchon, and we have another dumpster behind the auto parts store. The one behind <coughs> the auto parts store will be screened. Um, there's a detail in your plans. So it'll be a a vinyl uh, fence material similar to the dumpsters, if you recall, the ones that we did up at um, uh, Woodland Springs, Avery Park. If, you, if anybody has gone up there, you can see them if you go up by the units. They're a um, concrete pad with an enclosure in there so that the dumpsters are kind of out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. And it also helps um, for any uh, trash that might blow out of the dumpsters to be contained within that area. Um, Abishan is proposing um, a couple of out outside display areas. One of those will be in the area along the northwestern part of the site where the, where the, the wave parking is proposed. And then on the eastern side of the site, there's an area here. It's a concrete pad that's shown on the plan. Um, that will be another outside display area. If you go by the existing hardware store right now, you'll see there's seasonal things that are stored out there. It could be this time of year, you'll see snow shovels, uh, things of that nature. Um, uh, lawn chairs in the summertime, things things of that nature, like you see at the existing store, will be seasonal items will be will be sold and stored outside. In this area up front, we also have a above ground propane tank, and that'll be used for a propane refilling facility, and that'll be enclosed with a, a wrought iron gate type enclosure, fence and gate enclosure, and that's not to provide um, fuel for the store itself, but it's for uh, customers who want to come up and and fill their propane tanks, they'll have the ability to do that. All the buildings that are proposed meet the setback requirements for your regulations. And um, your regulations also require a landscape buffer. The idea being that um, within areas that are uh, proximate to the street lines, there's a sufficient landscape buffer to hide the parking and provide for some vegetation between the parking areas and the roadway itself. Your regulations require a 30-foot uh, landscape buffer. 
we are proposing uh, to respect that buffer with the exception of a very small strip that's located here in the front of the uh, parking for the auto park store and then the, the waived parking in front of the Aldershans. And I'd like to point out to you that under the existing site condition, there's an existing non-conforming encroachment where the existing parking area that's located here in front of the Aldershot comes all the way up to the property line. And we estimate there's about 3,200, almost 3,300 square feet of paved area within your landscape <coughs> buffer, within that 30-foot buffer. We're going to reduce that to, to less than half. So we're, what we're proposing is a total disturbance of 1,500 square foot, so less than half of that buffer. And that's only if these reserve spaces here are constructed. If not, then the encroachment is um, is uh, even less significant. If you recall, uh, I think it was the last year they finished, it might have been the year before, uh, Middle River Drive and West Stafford Road, the water main was extended all the way up past the Big Y on West Stafford Road. And also up Middle River Drive, they installed the water main. So we do have water service. Um, the existing building is already on the water service because the existing main or the old main ended here. It's continued up, and now we have an ability to tie in to the potable water on Middle River Road, and that's the Connecticut Water Company. Uh, we've shared plans with the Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, they <coughs> reviewed it and indicated that there is adequate sanitary sewer capacity. We propose on tying in the auto parts store to an existing lateral that's located on the property that drains into sanitary sewer on West Stafford Road. Electric telephone and communication services are available at the site. We propose to maintain the existing services, which are overhead services on this portion of the property. And for the new service for the auto parts store, we propose coming in off an existing uh, telephone pole that's or utility pole that's located either on the corner here or here, depending on where utility companies allow us. And that'll be an underground service <coughs> that will come to the, uh, the facility. We don't, we don't know if they're going to require us to put a transformer on the site. Um, unfortunately, when you're working with Eversource, they don't really tell you specifically if they're going to use can transformers on the poles or if they want you to come with something on the ground. But we have adequate uh, space to, to have those facilities and if, if they do require that. Once we make application of them for um, construction, then they'll, we'll work out the details with their resource in the field and they'll tell us where they want us to come in. Um, regarding stormwater management, <coughs> I can find my grading plan. That's showing your grading plan part of your package. <coughs> if you look at the existing topography of the site, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in West Stafford Road facing the building, the, the land slopes upward, obviously, towards the rear. And you can see the contour lines in the back. It's, it's pretty steep up in the rear of the property. Um, we think Several years ago, some of this material was mined out of here and removed. There's a lot of good sanding material on the site, or as part of the construction when the original gravel drives are put in. But the natural drainage patterns, if, if rain falls on the site, most of the water runs uh, towards West Stafford Road. A portion of it runs on the Middle River Road, but it, it all pretty much ends up in a storm drain system that the state of Connecticut owns down on and maintains out on West Stafford Road. There is a culvert, a private drainage culvert, that runs from the area in front of the house, goes actually underneath the road, gets picked up by a structure across the street, and then flows behind the, you know, I think it's an auto repair business on the other side of the road. Actually flows to a uh, swale behind there and then goes out towards the brook uh, way down in this portion of the project. So we're going to maintain the same drainage patterns. The, 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 the water that's flowing to this 15-inch culvert, cross culvert, and, and bypasses the state system. We're going to maintain use of that by connecting a number of storm drains that'll pick up parking lot areas and the roof and discharge it into that area. And then the portion that's on the rear of the project, we're going to provide for a, a stormwater detention and infiltration basin located back here. And this will be located in the area that's currently um, characterized by a gravel surface. The gravel drive ends in, in this area here, right about where you see this clearing limit. That's all a, a gravel drive. So we're not really going to be um, clearing much more of the wooded area in the back with the exception of an area around 
this portion to be able to construct our 100 foot turnaround. So the trees that you see there will remain. So hydraulically the characteristics will remain the same. If you keep the trees there, um, you get a lot of absorption of the runoff and it reduces your runoff. But because you are paving these areas, you're going to have an uh, increase in <coughs> runoff. Whenever you take something that's a field or woods and you pave it, you have more water to <coughs> run off. And hence, that's why we're proposing a detention basin. We'll pick up runoff from the rear portion of the site and portions of the roof runoff, and we'll drain it into a, uh, a basin that's in this area here. It's about four, four feet deep or so. And characteristically, it's in sandy soil, so most of the runoff that we introduce into that basin will infiltrate into the ground. And then overflow from that, we have a structure that sticks up from the bottom of the basin a little bit. When the water reaches a certain level, similar to a drain that you have on your sink, when it gets full, it'll drain out and then tie into the same system. So we've done a comprehensive drainage analysis <coughs> on this, submitted as part of the record, and we've demonstrated that uh, we, we will not have any increase in runoff for the 2, 5, 10, 25, 50, and 100 year storm. And I believe your regulations require uh, okay. mitigation for up to 50 to 100 year storm, so we do meet that regulation. And that was included <coughs> in the package. Um, we also are proposing some trap hoods um, the last catch basin that tie into the system. And what that is, is you, you oversize your catch basin with a deeper sump and there's a, a plastic structure that you insert inside and what it does is it, it prevents floatable materials from entering into the storm drain system. So if you have, you know, styrofoam cups or syrup butts or anything like that, uh, most of that stuff gets trapped in there and then they're cleaned out on an annual basis or semi-annual basis. And then sediments that fall in these basins are cleaned out. Um, routinely to keep the uh, runoff uh, stream that's leaving the site um, as clean as possible. Sedimentation and erosion control, uh, we are proposing a construction exit on this portion of the site and that's an anti-tracking pad so vehicles that, that enter the site and leave the site, um, they go over a stone apron that helps reduce the amount of sediments that are uh, leaving the site. We don't anticipate that to be much of a problem here because of the sandy soils. We also have the dark line you see with the X's, that's a silt fence erosion control. Uh, that'll be placed in areas down gradient. <coughs> you can see them along the perimeter of the site in this area, along this area, and around the edge. And what that does is it helps uh, prevent, during the construction, it helps prevent sediments from migrating from the site. It's a temporary measure. When construction is over and the areas are stabilized, those erosion control devices are removed. Uh, we do have a couple of permanent erosion control devices in, in this area along the pavement. On the east side of Albershawn, we have what we're calling a, a two-foot apron of riprap, which is a crushed stone material. That'll allow, instead of having a curb and gutter along here, it's a sheet flow scenario where the pavement is at the same level as the adjacent ground and water sheets flows over that area. The, the stone dissipates the energy, so it prevents erosion, and then that water flows um, to the area that's located to the east. Um, those uh, this plan was prepared in accordance with the Connecticut guidelines for soil sediment and erosion control. And uh, this commission has the authority on behalf of the town to approve these sedimentation and erosion control plans, and we're asking for your consideration as part of the approval to approve the sedimentation and erosion control plan. Because the site is under five acres, we do not have to register with the Connecticut DEP for construction, um, discharge of stormwater associated with construction and dewatering activities, but we are required to follow the guidelines that are established under their general permit, which we intend to do as part of our construction. And again, this plan follows those specific guidelines. As part of uh, the submittal that you have for this evening, we, we also submitted a comprehensive traffic report. And the traffic report includes analysis of capacity at the intersection of the roadways to show we have adequate levels of service. And then as part of um, the approval process that goes sort of along with that traffic report is we have to submit uh, plans for review and approval by the Connecticut Department of Transportation. If you recall, when we first came before this commission a couple of years ago, we were in the process of doing that. DOT really doesn't weigh in on projects until after you have an approval from the local authority. So subsequent to the approval that we received from this commission, we went back um, and made full submittals of the, both the traffic report and some offset roadway improvement plans to the Connecticut DOT. 
and I submitted for the record at the last meeting a letter indicating that the Connecticut DOT had approved the plans that, that I'm showing you here this evening. Even though they're not part of the site plan approval, they are part of the proposed construction that we're proposing. And since we've already gotten approval from the DOT for the plans, um, we're presenting them to you so if you have any questions, maybe you, um, we could answer those. Originally, we went in with what we call a 20-foot half section. Um, because we are proposing to have left turn maneuvers from eastbound traffic on Route 190 into the site, um, the DOT had requested that we widen the road so that we would provide a bypass for traffic that would be not turning left but continuing eastbound. And that is usually attained not by creating two uh, complete lanes, one for a dedicated left turn and one for a through lane, but providing enough width so that if a car is turning left, they stay close to the uh, WL center line and then a, a, another vehicle, passenger vehicle, will have enough room to get by on the right hand side without hitting the car that's turning left. We originally proposed a 20 foot half section, so a total 40 foot width on the roadway. The DOT came back to us and um, as of the last couple years or so, they're really looking at not a 12 foot lane, which they used to look at um, several years ago, but 11 foot lanes. So with the the old um, design that they used to like to see is a 20 foot half section. They asked us to reduce it to a 19 foot half section, which is the standard. So we are having a widening to a 19 foot half section. It's one foot less than what we anticipated and presented at the, at the meeting of last year or two years ago. Our traffic report indicates that there's adequate site distances uh, provided for the 85th percentile speed and the maneuvers that are leaving and exiting the property. Um, the location of our driveway, um, as we mentioned before, is a safer um, design than what was previously there with the two drives and especially with the one wider drive. By reducing the width of the driveway and reducing it to one drive instead of two, it's a much safer uh, scenario to have. As I mentioned, Connecticut DOT has granted approval of the design. <coughs> Well, the contractor who's going to build this will still have to make application for the DOT for an encroachment permit. And essentially what that is is a trade permit where the contractor will have to place a, a bond and insurance certificates. And then he'll receive a permit and schedule inspections with the DOT when this work is done. So this work all falls within the jurisdiction of the Connecticut DOT. And they'll be ensuring through field inspection and coordination with the contractor that the plan is built as they approved it. So having said that... Um, we do have some architectural plans that we'd like to show. And um, Eamon, did you want to talk about those at all? Please, yeah. Okay. Let me show you, um, I guess, <coughs> the old one first? Or? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I can well, maybe we can talk about this one here. <coughs> and while he's doing that, I do have, um, for the record, some small-scale versions of these. So you can take a look at these. Um, and the first series that I'll pass out is what we presented at the, we submitted with the application, and which was what we presented at the last meeting for acceptance of the application. And then this second one is um, what has the revisions that have been made subsequent to that to include <coughs> some of the architectural features that I believe the commission was looking for. So having said that, I'll let Eamon uh, take over. Uh, for the record, my name is Eamon Moran. I work for the Obershawn Realty Company as their senior vice president and treasurer, and I represent the owner here tonight. Uh, I'll First, quickly go over uh, a elevation that uh, some members of the board have already seen and some um, members of the public as it was presented very similarly or actually the same from uh, September of 2016 when we presented last. S highlighting some of those components to the existing building, we're going to use uh, two different paint schemes to uh, break up the front facade of the building here with the existing brick and uh, that would be in a cypress green light color and then the upper section here and the uh, two-thirds top here would be in a lighter country cream uh, the color that looks exactly as it sort of sounds uh, we're proposing three cupolas to break up the uh, elevation of the building and that would go on the existing roof line which we don't um, anticipate having to replace we'll just do a, a, a tune-up uh, for the manufacturers uh, specs there'll be a new 
passenger, uh, passenger uh, customer entry door here, and there'll be a new door uh, on center here. We're proposing non-functional uh, barn style doors to infill the existing overhead doors that the bus company used for in the rear. I think they're using them for bus um, repairs and then this section for probably just light, smaller vehicle repairs. But those will be infilled, the overhead doors will go away and these barn sort of um, motifs will, will be put in. Uh, these white horizontal uh, architectural features are just panels affixed to the existing metal that will break up the elevation, um, as I would like to refer to it as in the thirds, for one, two, three. Uh, and finally, in the front here, sort of customary to most hardware stores you see, there's an outdoor display that Guy alluded to. We're gonna, we've proposed to add a non-structural, but more ornamental uh, canopy that will be uh, lit underneath, have some nice decorative columns that will cover a display of snow blowers or garden chairs, uh, like I said, depending on the season, and will sort of uh, act as a buffer from uh, the, the parking area into the entry area. Pretty similar to the entry, the front entry that's there at the existing store. There's about a 10 foot concrete covered uh, canopy area, and, and this is the same that we're proposing here. If there are no questions on, on this elevation, I'll switch to the next building. The first illustration um, our elevation was brought to this board uh, a few weeks ago in our application meeting, and uh, I'm only presenting it now for reference uh, for improvements that we've tried to make since that uh, meeting. Several members of the board added uh, some nice commentary, uh, specifically towards various elements of uh, that. Uh, previous uh, elevation, and also noted the architectural guidelines from uh, section uh, 5108, uh, architectural guidelines from uh, your zoning regs, and I'd like to sort of use some of those to um, categorize some of the changes that we've made in the elevation of the O'Reilly Auto Parts building, which as Guy mentioned is the second building on the site. So. Uh, one of the comments that was mentioned he, was that there should be uh, no uninterrupted length of facade exceeding 100 feet, uh, and there should be incorporation of recesses and wall planes. And so what we've tried to do on the east and west sides, which are illustrated here and here, so if you're standing in the, on, on 190, uh, the right and the left, as uh, Guy has written here, right and left, uh, this is the area that will be facing Obershans. This is the area that faces uh, Middle River uh, Drive. We've broken up the sides with these parapet walls, which are dual function. It breaks up the length of the building, but also uh, architectural guideline 2A asks for uh, variations in roof lines shall be used in the design of the buildings. Uh, 2B calls out the need to uh, shield or screen rooftop HVAC, and uh, 2C, appearance of flat roof shall be avoided. Uh, those are uh, quotes from your uh, zoning regs, and that par the parapet has been uh, utilized to not only screen the HVAC, as you can see, is uh, you wouldn't be able to see, but it's tried to um, illustrate here behind so, oh, the parapet. Oh, that's what that is. I have that circle on my saying, yeah. what is that? So the HVAC are, are now screened from this new parapet elevation. We also accomplished breaking up the um, perception of a flat roof with the parapet. And then uh, and also a commentary that came uh, from the board asking that um, you know, the length of the building be broken up, uh, similar to how uh, Family Dollar and Dollar General have um, the columns. Their buildings are a little bit deeper, so I think they have three. We've proposed two here. Um, Moving along to sort of some of the uh, other architectural elements, previously this was all red. Um, there was a commentary that <coughs> the zoning regs, specifically 3C, ask for facade colors that are subtle, neutral, and earth tone. Uh, some members of the board have brought in some photos of other O'Reilly Auto Parts buildings and examples of those colors. So I went back to those folks and asked that we make that sort of uh, sim more similar presentation here. And so they've 
we've established three tones of uh, earth tones that we're going with. Uh, one will uh, be this portobello color. The lighter color is known as uh, a latte, and the top section concrete masonry unit would be a softer tan. Um, so this section here is about five CMU blocks high, so just under four feet, and that would be the portobello, and that would be established with uh, just a paint color uh, variation. Then the medium color brown and then the lighter tan. Mr. Moran? Yep. I received um, a copy of a proposal in between the first one and that yep. one. Yes. This one. Yep. So we had, we had, I had proposed stone on the front. Right, which I thought was very uh, a nice um, presentation yep. with the darker. And now they've changed it to what? Uh, this is uh, the sim a similar uh, material as the CMU right above it, so concrete masonry unit. Right, but they changed the color to the pink. lighter. Yeah, the proposed brown stone that you saw, right. we, I was trying to establish the similar style color than the stone was. It, that looks a little bit darker how that was printed out. But so they, they don't want to go with that. Okay, and then this column was a darker brown all the way up. These, col these columns here? Yeah, you see? Yeah, so they've, they've moved away, we moved away from the, that stone color because that's four different colors. Um, when right, and that's what broke it up for me very nicely. Uh, in the front? Yes. Okay. Definitely. And yeah. then you carried that along the side, on the uh, right side, which faces Aubuchon. Yeah, it was, it. it was on the east and the west side. I, and correct. Yep. And then the side uh, on Middle River Drive. Correct. I... Uh, I got that, what you're holding there, you I got do, that. You did see this. Okay. Yes, I got that approved with a portion of O'Reilly, and then another portion of O'Reilly came back and said, we, we won't do stone as you have it laid out like that. Can you do the colors if it's not that? I can do any color. I can do any colors that they're, uh, you know, they, they um, have in their book. The color's not an issue. I don't think the color is an issue. Okay, no. all right, that's what I wanted to establish. No. Um, I just wanted the, the commission to say, I don't know if they received a this, uh, the different, the column up and down of the same color, and it kind of offset the sign better than that representation, I believe. Uh, and the darker, making it the three, the really dark there was very nice. That can be different, but um, the sides, I think, are just the front kind of look very this just struck me as being very nice. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, 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 I think I'm... The, the I agree with it you. really stood out. I'm certainly... I, I actually, it stood out. Like, oh, there's, a, there's an auto parts store to me, honestly. Yeah. As no, I, opposed I, to all of that. Yeah. So you're, you like the establishment of vertical coloring versus these horizontal Verti coloring. Vertical, yeah. up and down, and it kind of set off your front, and then the uh, horizontal. I, I don't have any problem nice. with doing that and, no? and pushing O'Reilly to get that that coloring. Um, All right, it's it's just a color, so I don't think it's cost prohibitive. No, nope, no. Nope. And there, there um, yeah. is one minute. Um, Mr. Palmberg, unfortunately, one of our alternates, um, could not make it this evening, and he had a suggestion that I'd like to yep. bring forward on the left side. Uh, this that is on the Middle River Drive where you see coming on 190. Um, it's still rather plain, and, and he was wondering if perhaps some landscaping like bushes. We didn't get a landscape plan for that side. Yeah, so. Um, yes, mm -hmm. just some. The left side. Are you planning anything? Yes, there's a lot of plans. On the whole side, planting? Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't, no, as proposed, we don't have plantings all the, down the whole side. Do right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, just, proposed yeah, on that for the side. record, can I ask if uh, Excuse we are? Excuse me. Yeah. 
for the record, guy has because we are proposing um, in the back corner here that come to about maybe a quarter or so of the building, the white pines that that screen the dumpster area and a portion of the building. Okay. And there are three trees that are proposed along here, which are the ARQs, which I believe are. And, but uh, that's uh, along. Arrow, that's um, along the road, not the building. Red though. maples, yeah, they're located. Probably, well, in this area, it's about halfway between, and we're going to keep as many of these trees here as we can. In the front. So that, that will shield that long stretch of plant. Yeah, if you come this way especially, that's what we were sensitive. We have a bunch of shrubs that are planted here Perfect. to screen the parking. And then okay. leave these here, and then we'll just supplement them with a couple trees here. So from this angle, you're going to have a lot of vegetation that's going to block. Okay, because that was a concern of Mr. Palmer. It's, it's not illustrated naturally in this elevation where yeah. the trees right. are, but yeah. they're... There, as guide has highlighted, there's. Okay. I mean. Yeah, there's three three new trees. Three in that significantly series. significant trees, and then yeah. it, these are existing. Yeah, those are yeah. existing trees that are there. Some, the, a couple of them are good size. In the back okay. third are with the screening here. Because how you had done the bus company, absolutely fabulous. It's going to look fantastic, and and um, and I know you would want the building next to it to look just as nice. That's sure. For sure. I agree. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the rest of the commission members. Did you? Um, do you agree with the, the column going all the way up with the same color? Like I showed her, do you like the what? I wanted to know if you agreed that you liked that color um, going all the way up or no. Well, I don't find it too bad, okay. but um, I remember last time you had a picture. Do you still have the picture? Because here's another one that I found. Yeah, but we, we discussed that two weeks ago when they, yeah. they um, we showed different where you had a parapet. Yeah. So instead of the... This is one of the stories up in, I think it's Michigan. Right. Instead of the peak, they, they have extended and the rope up, so it's not I'm just flat. wondering if they would substitute this for that red. What? You know, do you point it Yeah, not, not this, this, on the front of the store. Yeah. Hi. Is that all white on the front? Um, uh, well, no, all, it's just that she had a picture that was something like this, but, and it took, you know, the, it wasn't, the red wasn't there. It there was, was a white sign, but it was a very dark building, so it showed up. At the last time you were here. Yeah. It was, the, the front of the store looks similar like this, but there was, the, the red sign wasn't there. It was, it was the sign oh. looked something like this. Okay. So, no, I of course, is that a standalone store, or is that part of the mall? Yeah, so I, I think the, the challenge with that one is that's an existing building attached to a CVS, mm, from what I can see, attached. quickly. So yeah. I don't know if they were using no, existing see. building conditions, but interestingly enough, and I'm, I'm learning this too, these uh, mm. auto part dollar store, some hardware stores to a lesser extent, are have different programs and prototypes as it pertains to buildings that are attached to other buildings and the sizes they can be and how they should look versus freestanding ones. We're, we're working with a freestanding one. I'm, um, we're, I'm working with uh, a certain set of architectural guidelines that they'll bless. So that wouldn't be in that set of guidelines because it's, it's an attached building. Right. It's similar to Family That's Dollar, it's still similar to Dollar General. Um, and so uh, the parapets that we've proposed here is kind of <coughs> our solution to... Well, you did follow the regulation yeah. of not having the flat roof. Uh, I just want the commission's input before... Um, we ask you to um, go ahead with that change, uh, Ron and Cindy. Do you like the, that, or would you prefer the that they change it to the full up and down? I want all the commission's input. Top one. Right, right. Um, I, I don't either. You know what's fine. It, it, to be honest, I think this one almost seems more in um, in compliance with the with the request for earth tones. I don't know. This, that just seems well, to add another. It, well, it's brown, so right, you know, right. it's not. Are you pushing for this? Here? No, I'm not pushing for that. I'm, the column up and down. I just thought it set off the, so rather than stop the sign the, better. So rather than stop instead the page, of you want right. To well, yeah, it, does, it does frame it better. I, I thought it fine, yeah. framed it better. Yeah, yeah. I thought it would be better for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you see how it frames the sign better? Yeah. It really catches your eye. You're, so we're you not like looking the, for the brown the, the, the up and downs. Down. You're like yeah. the vertical component of it. Yeah. Right. So you would fill, yeah, you would fill in, fill in this. That. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. And how about over here, which you carry Well, you know, what about the size, Dave's saying? Yeah, that would probably even... 
um, break just it up even more. Tops, one, just the columns. Make them the same colors. Would that be acceptable, Mr. the you, you start doing uh, that. It's acceptable to me. Yeah. I can bring it back to those folks. But is that going to make it look like three buildings? Yeah, I mean, the, the, what we were mm -hmm. trying, yeah. Um, it what may. do you mean three buildings? Well, you're going to have columns going up. You're going to, they're going to look like additions. Three stories. Oh, um, you may have an idea there. I, I would say just the front to frame the sign. I thought it just. Uh, it's a, it's a nice it's, a, my it's eye. a nice comment, and I happily bring it back to O'Reilly to see if the columns um, look nice. They're, they're comfortable you like with it. it too. Yeah, yeah, I think it makes it more substantial. The, I think on the sides it's going to make it look like too much on a the box sides. and then two additions attached to it. But did you notice O'Reilly is higher on the building <clears throat> on that particular one drive? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I think looks nice. Very nice. Yeah. I like the sign on the side too. Very nice. Well, if um. Otherwise, you drive by it before you know it's there. You do. It, it's it's too. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, is there any other questions on anything for Mr. Escort from Mr. Moran? I, I do have the um, I have the certificates of mail in and the sign for posted. Very good, thank you. In the beginning, you said that the, um, the um, propane charging or charging station is going right on the side of the building. Is that? Too close to the building. Um, you know, we, so we, we have like a thousand pound tank within three feet of the. Yeah. So uh, the experience of the Overturn Hardware Company is in 85 communities in New England, and every community has their own guidelines through their own fire department. Uh, so we've had very <coughs> unique circumstances where you can get a propane filling station in downtown Montpelier, Vermont, five feet from a building and high traffic, and other um, fire uh, chiefs. Want it, you know, back in a corner behind Fort Knox. Mm -hmm. We only we only listen to the fire chief when he his guidelines, what his uh, state regs. So that's far enough from the building to meet the state requirements. But then we'll meet with the fire chief and make sure whether bollards, the fence, Jersey barriers, or sometimes requested anything that he wants, we end up. Doing. <laughs> well, I remember um, something in uh, continuing ed that. Uh, took the, the, the fumes would go up into the soffit and then into the building. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, we don't, I've never heard of that, but again, we will only do with what, what the fire chief or fire inspector, whoever uh, the governing body is in town, will allow us to do. You're going to have the outdoor sales behind that also, you said. Yeah, that's not going to be, it's going to be more bulk storage area, so maybe topsoils or oh. excess topsoils, so pellets not really in the winter. Customer. Th not that area, the area next to the parking area that That's we're asking for a display. waiver, that will be more of a formalized garden, re outdoor retail shopping area, springtime. Like what's on the side now? Yeah, Maybe but now. more, I think even more substantial in the sense that the uh, pellets will go in the back or on the, on the side. So that'll be more storage, and if you're uh, if there's not your product like uh, a certain topsoil that you have and it's not in that garden area, then you might drive around back and, uh, and grab a bag on the back side there, which is nice because you can just kind of circle around the building and then... Any other questions? Um, the only other comment I want to make is that if you could get onto Roosevelt, I'd be a lot happier with it, but otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, pa I'll pass along the observation <laughs> to them. I know uh, I see the red on all their new buildings. I think it's part of their branding. The orange, the right. the red and the and the green. Um, but they do do it in other places. So. Yeah. Yep, I'll, I'll pass along the, the suggestion. Well, what you any, any other questions? Any other questions? If not, I'll open it up to the public. Uh, prior to speaking, if you could just give your name and address. <coughs> Anyone? Anything? Gail Panther, thirty-eight West Efford Road. Um, after the first application was submitted two years ago, the applicant had to go for an encroachment permit. Um, does the same hold true after this application? Do they have to submit the new traffic report and everything? Yeah, the traffic report, um, <clears throat> the previous traffic report was submitted. Um, for the next application, uh, a copy of the revised site plan will be submitted and the, the actual contractor We'll make application for 
the encroachment permit himself, it won't be us. It'll be the licensed contractor that will make application. Why is it different this time? Uh, well, it has to be a, a, a licensed state contractor. I'm not a licensed state contractor, so. But you submitted it the first time? No, we submitted plans for review, pre-application review to the DOT. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Um, this, what's the septic situation for the existing building? You mentioned the, the new building was going to tie into the um, street septic, but what about the existing building? What's going well, on there? No, the, the existing building is tied into the sanitary sewer, and the new building will be tied into the sanitary okay. sewer system. Okay. Um, the private catch basin, will there be increased runoff into that particular basin? No, the um, storm drainage analysis that we conducted shows that there's a net decrease in all of the storm events for the 2510, uh, 2550, and 100-year event. And even with the increased pavement for the driveway and everything, there'll be less going into that basin? Yeah, that's correct because we have um, a stormwater detention and infiltration basin which will mitigate any increase in peak runoff. Um, for the board, what are the screening regulations for the frontage where a residence is across the street? Does it differ than if there was another business across the street? I don't have that answer. I believe it's it's with the abutters as opposed to across the street. But I'd have to check that and get back to. It. Okay, could, could you do that? Wouldn't it be based on the height on the highway industrial? Zone? I think it's based on the zone. It's based on the zone. It's not, it unfortunately doesn't it doesn't differ based on abutting properties. It's all based on on the zone. So it doesn't matter what the use is that is in the the abutment. Not for, um, not for the buffering. I don't think. So if. Um, even if there is no difference whether across the way is the residence or another business, what is the screening that's required for, for that location in front? And if you could refer to the huh? regulation itself. It's in, it's in highway industrial. So the, the front yard. Pardon? Yeah, did you find it, Dave? Yeah. Any lot developed for commercial or industrial use shall provide a landscaped area adjacent to the street line mm -hmm. that is not less than the width specified in the table below. So in the highway industrial, it's 30 feet. And that's what you spoke to when he made the presentation. Okay, does it specify what plantings need to be there? Um, one shade tree. One shade tree, at least three inches in caliper for each 50 feet of street okay. And that's it? Yeah. Yeah, um, so with the widening of the road, um, my mother's property is going to be impacted <coughs> as far as the stone wall is going to be cut into, um, perhaps the fence, the split rail fence that's there, her mailbox. Um, who is responsible for replacing those? Is somebody responsible for replacing those? For the, uh, the split rail and the mailbox, we're responsible for replacing those. Okay, and the stone wall that abuts her driveway that will be cut into? Yeah, uh, on our plan we show replacement of the split rail fence and hardware. Um, the driveway will be repaved or paved, I don't know if it's paved now, to the um, right of way line. And then uh, there will be a, a radius, a 10 foot curb radius from the edge of the road to match the existing retaining wall that's there. Any other retaining wall that's within the right of way that's in conflict with that would be removed. And then the transition would be made from the existing retaining wall to the curb itself. Um, what about protection for the trees in her front yard? There's two maple trees in her front yard that they're going to get awfully close to. 
likely be cutting into roots. So what kind of protection is provided? And if the trees these, die... These ones? Or? Um, I don't think they're on your map. Yeah, there's two that are on, in front of the house. There's two right here. There's two right here. Talking yes, about the two. Yeah. You're talking about yes, these two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guys, there's some sort of... Um, Yeah, they'll, be, they'll have construction fence placed around them to protect them during construction. How do they protect their roots? Well, whatever roots are within the right of way, um, th those are uh, legally can be disturbed. Uh, they'll minimize the disturbance to those and, and restore that area when they're done to to match the, the, the lawn that's in. Um, and in the future, curve. if the tree should die, I I can't speak to that if they should die or not. We'll take any, the contract will take any precautions that are, that are necessary to minimize any disturbance to the, to the roots itself. Again, all, any construction that he'll do will be totally within the right of way. They won't do any construction on your property except for the fence itself, which is right on the line. Correct, but it impacts um, things on her property. Your, uh, your desire is to keep the trees oh, God, in their yeah. existing condition, yes. right? Okay, sure. just want to make sure. Um, and then one final question. As far as the runoff on the east part of the property, you're saying that there's trap rock, trap rock there that will absorb the runoff, and, but, and then it will go further east, but that's the neighbor's property. Is that allowed to have runoff go to an abutting person's property? Yeah, well, um, the existing drainage patterns that are there now will be maintained. In other words, the runoff that discharges to that area now under existing conditions today will be maintained following construction. And you don't calculate any additional runoff? No, there's no additional runoff to that um, to that eastern property. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I have a question. Name and address. Um, Cindy Guerra, 33 West Stafford Road. She answered, she asked one of my questions on the runoff into um, our property on the east side with the trap rock. Um, my question is on the retention basin that you're going to build. How, build, how big is that going to be? That's a good question. Um, well, showing up the plan here. Do you want to know, like, the, the area? Or the well, is it going to be a retention or a detention basin? Um, I guess it would depend on how you define detention versus Is there retention. always going to be water in it, or is um, it going to drain? Well, the way, the way it's designed is that it, it will, immediately following a storm event, it will have water in it. When the water reaches a certain elevation, it will overflow through a high-level overflow. Mm -hmm. But we anticipate, based upon the soil, Soils that are on the site in the test pits that were done because they're sandy in nature and the groundwater table is deep, that any water that is temporarily detained in the basin will infiltrate into the ground below and recharge the groundwater that's there. So we don't anticipate there to be any, I don't know if you're referring to stagnant water or something like that, but we don't anticipate there to be any, any standing water within any uh, significant time after the storm, say 24 to 48 hours or so. So it's not going to be a pond, so to speak? Um, a pond with a wet bottom in it? Is that what you mean by a pond? Or? Well, like if you were a retention basin where there's always a certain level of water <coughs> in it at all times. No, we, versus, don't, yeah, we don't anticipate there to be any standing water in there for any significant So then how are you going to, my understanding is then you're referring, that you're describing more of a detention basin where it just fills after a storm and then eventually dissipates down into the soil, correct? Well, it depends. What it's going to serve as is a combination detention slash infiltration basin. So the water is going to, typically with the detention basin, is you detain water and then you throttle it back at a certain level so that, that water is dissipated over a certain amount of time after a storm. If you have an infiltration basin and the main mechanism for that water below the outlet is to dissipate through infiltration into the soil, not through some structure to go out of the... Uh, Pond itself. Is there any connection from the pond to the drainage system to the road for mm -hmm. overflow, or is it all ju you're just? No, no. There's a, the overflow is is part of the drainage system that will flow to the 15-inch pipe that's located in the road. So 
other way. Um, this area here represents the detention infiltration basin here. And the contours on this are at elevation, the bottom would be at elevation 516. The outlet itself is at elevation 519. So potentially there could be three feet of water in this after a storm. And anything that gets above that level will flow into a catch basin inlet and be piped through the site to the 15-inch storm drain that flows under West Stafford Road. So water that comes into this basin here will infiltrate into the ground if it's above that 519 level. So, so how do you mitigate five, mosquitoes? How do you mitigate? Well, well again, that's, that's not going to be a mosquito haven. I, I, I can't say that it would be because if it doesn't hold water for a long time, it won't have mosquitoes in it. But it's not going to, you're, so you're anticipating it's going to completely dry out between rains. Yeah, the test pits that we did on the site show that the groundwater table is down pretty much at the level of the pond that I think you have over in this area here, about elevation. Uh, at this location, the site about elevation, <coughs> 515 or so. This is a very shallow swale, too. I mean, we have. I, I, don't I understand that, but my concern that is of a mosquito. No, I, I, I hear you. And I don't like the idea. I do not like the idea of what that's there. I do not like that. My concern well, is interesting mosquitoes. Is, well, the interesting thing is, is the actual the Connecticut DEP has two criteria for what they call um, primary stormwater treatment practices. One of them is actually encouraging you to have a wet bottom, where they want you to actually have a wet bottom basin, which is equal to the water quality volume, which on average is about one inch of runoff over the entire drainage area that drains into it. They actually encourage you to have that remain wet. Another option is to have an infiltration basin. So if we were to create a basin that was wet all the time, we would actually be meeting what the DEP requires in their stormwater quality manual. So we're opting to go for a system that that will have infiltration, which is also considered a water quality, a best management practice for water quality treatment. So, um, you know, as far as vectors of mosquitoes and things like that, I'm bound to design something that meets this, the 2004 DEP stormwater quality manual, whether it's a wet bottom basin or an infiltration basin that meets that standard. If there's an issue with, you know, uh, mosquitoes or anything like that, uh, that's something that I think you could probably take up with the DEP. There's nothing that I can do to control if 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 mosquitoes were to, to breed in, in an environment that <coughs> what I have to do is a, as an engineer is design something that meets the design standard for water quality volume and it would meet the design standard for water quality volume whether it were infiltration or it were a wet bottom basin. Now why couldn't why would the other plan that you had presented two years ago work on this site versus having the infiltration basin? Oh the one where we had a underground infiltration system. It, it would work here, except we don't have as much room as we had on the previous plan. So I would be, I would be entering water into an area where the building foundations are, and I'd prefer not to do that. These, these buildings are closer together. If you recall, the other, the other site had a building back in this direction here, we had an infiltration system that was located up in this area here. What is the size of that basin? Again, volumetrically, or do you want to know the area of it? The area of it. I need my cheater glasses. <laughs> uh, at elevation 518, it's 20 foot by 150 feet or something. So how is it, what's, are you landscaping around it or is it just a, more of a shallow? It's going to be um, seeded with a New England conservation wild mix, wildlife mix, which includes um, uh, tra transitional upland and wetland plantings, seed mix. Instead of normal grass, it has a, a lot of native uh, species that are indigenous to this area that, that promote stormwater renovation. And for roots. Yeah. 
birds and bunny friendly type of stuff. The idea is that it won't be mowed once it's once it's uh, planted. It just goes fallow and then let the plants the plants actually do a lot of uptake for any of the nutrients that are in the water. Cleansing process. So you're just going to let that area grow? That'd be the intent, yeah. I don't care for the plan. I think it's gonna be a mosquito haven. I really do. From the research that I had looked up on retention and detention basins, I think it's going to be a mosquito haven. And being right on the east border of the property, I think it'll affect us. I, I don't because I think if you were to go out the site now, you would see that there's significant areas of standing water that are located here in the wetlands area. So. I think they're significantly larger in number than the total square footage area that we have here is, is minuscule compared to the entire wetland, contiguous wetland community that's located between here and the adjacent residents, from what I've observed on the site. But they have different type of, um, <coughs> and, you know, like turtles and frogs and things like that that, is, that eat the mosquitoes in that wetland area that you're referring to. We're not going to have any such thing in that grassed area. And that keeps down the mosquito population in that uh, wetland pond near that culvert there. That's just my opinion. I think it's mosquito, it'll be a mosquito problem. I think Mr. Heskoff did note that it would not have any additional runoff. Oh, and it had Believe two years ago, you thought it would even be less. Yeah, the, the um, both the plans that we presented previously and in this application, um, because of the detention that we're providing in this area here, and we're capturing most of the runoff that's coming from the hillside itself and a small portion of the parking area, where all of that before used to run directly undetained to the 15 inch culvert. Now we're taking about a third of the property, and we're actually taking that water and introducing it in here and detaining it, throttling it back. So by the time all of this water reaches this culvert, the overflow from this would be coming here. But even our, even our calculations show in a 100-year storm, we don't even have any overflow. So we've, over, we've oversized this to capture 100% of the runoff entering into it. So that the overflow is purely for academic reasons in case there's significant back-to-back -back storms that it would be able to handle the runoff from that. But yeah, the drainage pretty, pretty analysis. Pretty soil back there, isn't it? Yeah, the site is quite sandy. So it should leach. Yeah, there's a transition area where you get up in here um, where you get a lot of the rocks and the boulders and stuff like that. But the, the site itself is um, primarily a, 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 a sandy matrix. There's some silt in it, but it's not significant. The not test pits that we did out here, it was you know, mason sand, beach sand. Not a lot of clay. No. It's very similar to, um, not too much different than what we found over behind the big Y. I think this may have been a gravel pit at some time, years ago possibly, because this this is kind of what you see. We found a lot of spaces like that behind the big Y. You go out in the woods and you'd find these areas that were cut, they're like shelved in. Right? Yeah, and they're shelved in, and, and there was a lot of there was a lot of sand deposits from uh, you know, whatever the glaciers left behind in those areas. But some parts of town have really tight soils in them. I think out by the school they have problems with that. Um, this bench here seems to be uh, characterized by a lot of sandy gravel materials. Uh, Nancy, uh, Donna Wright, 95 West Stafford Road. The, installa the new installations that were put in at Family Dollar and um, Dollar General, they, all, they have new sidewalks on 190. So does this installation not require that because it's an existing uh, building? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't the town benefit from having a sidewalk yeah. on 190 there? They had we had discussed that and due to the i think there was a covert drainage etc we were two years ago let me back up two years ago when they were going to have the buildings in the back yes. yeah. uh we had proposed the sidewalk for the far corner up middle river drive because that. then that would be the pedestrian area that is not the case now with this new proposal 
because that back driveway is just for truck entrances. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have customers walking up the middle, you know, they would be going in through the front. And there was an issue um, that the state brought up also, I believe, and DOT studied yeah. said that it would not, they could not put it on the right side. And I think Guy can explain it better than I. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the, the plan we presented a couple of years ago had a sidewalk that went um, from the right of way on this side of the property, the east, um, across the frontage, and then we had it come up and then the, um, into a driveway that kind of fed the second building. And remember, you're going to have a coffee shop there, possibly. Yeah, like yeah. a little drive in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we thought. Yeah. 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 So, here, what happened when we, we had showed it on the plans, the commission had approved it with it, and they also, as a condition of approval, we had a sidewalk going up Middle mm -hmm. River Road, Middle River Drives. <clears throat> When we went to the DOT, um, we went through about four rounds of design with the DOT to get these plans approved. Um, initially, we showed the sidewalk on the curb line because that's the way they are in most other places in town. Mm -hmm. DOT said, no, don't put it on the curb line. We want it on abutting the property line because in the future, if they ever widen a the road, they don't want to be responsible for it. So we showed them a sidewalk coming up along the property line on the right away side but half a foot off the property line and DOT came out and they did a field visit and they said why are you showing a sidewalk from here to here because there's no way to get to this because there's guide rails and there's traffic control boxes and a bunch of other stuff and in order to put that sidewalk in you'd have to spend a half a million dollars rem removing all of that stuff and they said take this off of here and we had a sidewalk going from here up the side and then they said well we don't want you to we had a ramp out here and we were going to provide sidewalk access here they said because of the railroad bridge here we don't want to encourage pedestrians to use that intersection so take that ramp off so then we ended up with a sidewalk that went from this driveway up the road to this driveway which doesn't really make a lot of sense because no one's going to walk over here and then come back up here the whole idea was for pedestrian connectivity so the plan we got approved by DOT which is here, actually shows a sidewalk from here coming up and going up to here. But they won't let us put a ramp in. Then on the fourth round of comments, they came back and they said, well, we don't like the radius that's here. Even though this is an existing town road and an industrial park, they wanted us to widen these radii to provide for access for what they call a WB67 vehicle, which is a wheelbase 67, which is the long haul truckers with the big cabs on it mm -hmm. and the 54 foot boxes. Mm -hmm. So now we're widening this entire road intersection over here, which requires drainage improvements and everything else. So, which, and that's the other reason they don't like walks at oh. signals on at intersections unless they're signalized because now with the width of that driveway, if somebody's walking across here and it's going to take them, you know, 35 seconds to walk across. So it's a dangerous situation. So they said, don't, we don't want pedestrians going across this intersection. So our latest plan for the DOT includes this widening. You can see here's the edge of the existing road. We're pulling it back about 15 feet or so in here. And then this intersection is getting pulled back 15 feet. And we got these really sweeping radii on there. And then we got to do all the drainage improvements associated with that. So this is, represents what the DOT wants us to do as far as the improvements on the site are concerned. So the sidewalk. We do show it on the plan because the DOC, DOT is like, well, look, if you want to build it, go ahead and build it, but don't connect it to our intersection and don't tie it in over here because you're creating a situation where people are going to walk into the woods and they get over there. So, so after four, our fourth round or fifth round of comments, we threw our hands up here and said, okay, this is our plan. I would have preferred the sidewalk. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we, definitely. We, we went back and forth on that. So, the and, sidewalk would have been yeah, better. So, <laughs> so the, with the commission, um, we discussed it last, uh, last week when we presented the application for acceptance. And, um, you know, it doesn't make sense to put a sidewalk in from half of the driveway up the other, to the other drive. Um, hmm. I think it would make more sense in the future should, um, should there be a, a, a comprehensive sidewalk plan mm -hmm. that we're either prepared by the town or in town working in conjunction with the DOT, is to have, you know, possibly even on the south side of the road might make more sense for some of the connectivity. Or if they have a master plan coming up. But, but a master plan is going to have to include some of these you know, um, crossings for culverts and stuff like that in the railroad trestle, the railroad bridge. So it's, it's 
it's, it has to be a lot of thought has to be put into it. So this is what we ended up with. And we didn't show a sidewalk on the current plan just because of that. We didn't think it made sense. We're hoping the commission agrees with us on that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Any other question? Sure. Cindy Guerra, 33 West Stafford Road. Where do you anticipate snow removal, pushing your snow with the new design? Yeah. Is there an elevation there? This area is fairly, I mean, th this is 100 feet wide, right? Yeah, 100, 100 foot, foot radius. 100 yeah. foot radius. I mean, this is a pretty large area that will be shelves in the back too. realistically be underutilized. So I, I think a fair amount of snow can be stored here and then along this area here. Um, we had discussed two years ago Correct. that you had concerns about them um, dumping the dumping snow, snow into on the this side. Correct. And the response that I had to that was the same I'll have tonight is if that happens and you're concerned you call me um, and if you don't have my card you'll have it in a second I do have it. and then um, they won't do it anymore <laughs> so uh, it's a local guy who we've been using to um, do just an, a very below average job maintaining the site I, I apologize for that you know in terms of mowing and, and plowing um, but he will do yeah, that's my fault not his he will be doing the plowing uh, and uh, and any concerns that you have, you just need to voice to me and they'll, they'll be changed. But uh, one of the things I'll point out to him that there should be no snow pushing on the east side of the site, and it should be all towards the north. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, I can entertain a motion. Would someone like to make a motion that we uh, close the public hearing for Bishan uh, Realty Company? I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of closing the public hearing, the Albishan Realty Company, signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. We will now go to our regular meeting. We'll call the meeting to order and have a quorum. On my left is uh, Butch Bonner. He's sitting in for Jean Julian. Kathy Bakiaki, myself, Nancy Rivetto. Ron Wolf and Cindy Rome. The second item on the agenda is to review the minutes from January 23rd. Do I have a second? second? All those in favor of accepting the minutes from January 23rd signify by saying aye. 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 Number three, discussion and possible action on the public hearing of Abishan Realty Company. Is there any other comments from the commission? Discuss. If not, our motion would be in order. Uh, what, do you want to yeah, okay. So the discussion is we did like the picture, picture frame in the front, but not on the sides because then it looked like three different buildings on your pretty yeah the, the color the color oh i do can i clarify one thing about the coloring are you not in favor of the, the portobello which is the darkest level you want it darker than that <coughs> or are you comfortable with the portobello right here what are they calling that co that color on your chart the second color from the top okay portobello is it the same because the, i think portobello. Exterior. The second down below. Yeah. Well, the second down is Portobello. Yeah, so that's the same color that we presented here today. It's just a printout is different. I mean, the color oh, is gloss. Oh, all right. Yeah, so, so I want to make. it up to the top. 
If right. we extended it like, like we discussed at the top, but I wanted to make sure that the color it's, that we were talking it's about. It's a part was, of Bellow, yeah. Okay. Yeah, same thing. It just yeah. came out. It came out lighter on the, this one here. Okay. Oh, okay. But um, she's asking that it goes all the way up yeah. to, to picture. Yeah. So, if, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, would someone like to make a motion? Motion to approve the temporary waiver request of 15 parking spaces as submitted by section 6.2D. Okay. okay, after a review of the application and information received at the public hearing, it has been found that this application meets or exceeds the zoning regulations and that the standards and criteria in sections 8.10 and 5.11 have been met. In addition, the application conforms with the town's plan of conservation and development, particularly sections 2.5, 2.77, and 5.62. Subject to the following conditions. Final approvals for specific <coughs> sanitary sewer requirements to be obtained from the WPCA prior to the issuance of any building permits for the new building and kiosk. A pre-construction meeting be held prior to any construction with the ZEO, Director of Public Works, and the Town Engineer Building <coughs> Official. At an as-built survey of the foundation be required prior to framing and a complete as-built survey showing all improvements <coughs> and rating be required upon completion of the site work and prior to the in issuance of a CO. Following approval, five paper sets and one Millar set of plans shall be submitted Mylar set of plans right. shall be submitted to the ZEO for approval signatures. Plan set shall include the approval letter with conditions as well as a signature block for the Planning and Zoning Commission members. Following the signing of plans, the Mylar <laughs> set shall be recording in the town clerk's office. One paper set of signed plans will be returned to the applicant. Sign permit shall be required for all signage, a performance bond in the amount of $30,000 or an amount determined by the commission shall be posted to the town of Stafford. The performance bond shall not be released until all the bonded work is completed to the satisfaction of the appropriate agencies. Thank you. Thank you. That's I don't it. Know if I can oh. get a copy of that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> yeah. I think you might. If you didn't get that. The only suggestion I would have was that you mentioned the building and the kiosk, and I sort of stole that from the last approval. Yeah, the, so kiosk, the kiosk is no longer. Mm -hmm. We will the building and kiosk. We will strike that. Just the as kiosk. As amended, amended, strike the kiosk. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Would someone like to make a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Motion to approve the application for waiver request of 15 parking spaces as submitted by Section 6.2D. Second. 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 I'll, I will do my, I, I want to be on the record, I will do my best to get the portobello and the columns. I think I can do it. I don't know if I want the motion contingent upon it if I fail with O'Reilly, but that's the board's decision to make. Now, we, we close the public hearing. It's either we approve or we deny. If we had kept it open, then we would Well, that's a small contingency to get a building permit, so. <laughs> there may be architectural, I don't know how they're handled, but there might be architectural tweaks as we go along. There's always some site plan revisions that they can come back and ask mm -hmm. for. Yeah. But you know what we're looking for. So but we you know what we're looking for. Correct. Correct. So we'll have to come to you with us anyway. Yeah. Right there. This is color, it's not. Okay. Is there a second on this motion? A second. Is there any further discussion? So the motion to approve the application of Amishan Realty Company uh, for special permit application uh, with the applicable waivers, etc., and also to strike the, the word kiosk in the original motion. All those in favor say, signify by saying aye. 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 
Thank you. Appreciate Thank you very much. For review our zoning regulations, first on the, the agenda is agritainment rates. Good evening, Dr. Mordaski. I heard you had an emergency. Oh, really? Oh, so, Scale farm event that it would be too cumbersome for a, a small farmer to have to do that $310 permit every year. So the way uh, we had changed it, you had seen how it was changed to reflect that it was that the one time permit. But the, the permit was contingent on the following the regulations in the review of the CEO. So that, that was an excellent job. And the rest of your commission agreed with this uh, um, large scale. You can see it. It was a random yes, we night working with this, this all along. We did, we did make a change to the bottom part of that. Large scale events where we talked about vehicles and we also talked about people. And we took the people out. I don't know about you, but I remember we used to put about 15 people in a Volkswagen. Go to the drive in. <laughs> Go to the drive in, right? <laughs> so uh, I understand where people is not appropriate, but we have to allow us to put that type of grass that he suggested that grows a little bit higher than what they made us put actual grass in it. Anyway. So. <laughs> uh, this on, is, uh, uh, so I think this is going to go back to yes. the commission this tomorrow. Is this is, this is I think we can. I would like to put it in public. Okay, well let's let's um let's see if we can schedule a public hearing for that second meeting in. Uh, March. I wouldn't want the first or second a, a 30 detent, days uh, a retention second, bond of water setting next to my house just like you would have. And okay. it didn't happen in this okay. huge soil okay? instance on sandy soil, so I have no reason to believe that we would design one in as we three feet deep that would that would hold water. Meeting in March. Um, I mean, March. What it's worth. So you have my word if there's a, actual yeah. issues with it, meaning so. There, there's water that's staying there, yes. and mosquitoes are no, breathing, you know, like, like you're concerned to your voice, and you have to call me and say, we need to do something about this, you know what I mean? Guy has to come in and design something to get, to get the water out of here, you know what I mean, faster. But I, I don't have any indication that when you see me at the Grand Open, you know, or uh, on site, or the manager, you can just talk to why do we all the changes on that, that's just building. Yeah. So, I want you to feel that was comfortable that if there is yeah. an issue, that you know, there's an issue. And we took out the building. So, could we also add that to the March? Okay. So, that's happening. March 27th. Okay. Boy, we're moving right along here. Thank you for your comments. That's that's good. That's okay, the in-law part. Yeah, I would have preferred that sidewalk over than all the other stuff. Um, <laughs> change that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I have a question. I, I'm still confused, Dave, and I know you can help me here. We changed the J and took out originally intended. Uh, but the 
the in-law apartment unit will be altered to return the house to its original status. I thought that's what we didn't... Well, we left it in there so if people are, going to, if people are not going to continue to rent it, then they should change it back. Okay. I mean, did that because I was... Because well, so then K says uh, an accessory apartment, and, and it just seemed like there was a conflict between J and K, that's all. But it's not. No. No, I, I think they're... No, because we're going to keep it that way. It's not a D. No, that's if you're going to rent it. You're making an apartment. But this says it must will be altered to return the house to its original, original status. See what I'm saying? The, the Otherwise, if you don't have immediate family there, now it is a two-family home if you're renting it. And it's saying that, but it's not saying that in J. It's just saying it should, it has to be return. back to its original status. You see what I'm saying, Dave? I, I understand. We could probably sort of tie those two together. I think so. So that I we can so. say, I think we can tie them together into one statement. Okay. So you can either you can either revert it back, which of course is your right anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, mean, I, think, I think our intent was not to require that it be reverted. I, I, this back. requires it, and we don't right. want to require it. In other words, we're, we're people add an addition. What do you want to just say, may be returned, and so then it's just a wishy-washy statement? Or maybe eliminate it altogether? Altogether. Yeah. Okay, let's take it out. Take it out. So K will become J? Yeah. And L will become K. Right. Yeah. So the, so that was our intention. Well, that's what I believe. Yeah, okay. And I kept reading it and reading it and said, what am I not understanding? Well, because we sort of took it out and put it back and took it out. Yeah, and put, put it, it back. back. Yeah. yeah, but we didn't want, we didn't want families to have to incur the cost of and demolishing it. part and of the Like an addition, you right. know? Yeah, an addition. Of, Even though it was right. still part of the house. Right. Um, do you think um, this is good to go yeah. to the public hearing then? Public hearing, okay. Put yeah. Doug? Yes. Yeah. 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 Is there going to be any public input at all? Pardon? Um, I, I think oh, I, sure. What would you like? I just think in reviewing uh, the regulations, I was looking at the accessory building. I think there's two spots where it says refer to Section 7.2F and it's 7.3, or it might be reversed, but there's two spots. Um, we're going to a hearing about other little changes, and I, I just think that there were, were those two errors. It, it just doesn't make sense. It why don't you? Why don't you talk to you about it? Yeah. Okay, I'll just. Because there's answer. other there's other little things that we need to tweak that we okay. can just put the in. numbers because we keep changing. Right. And yeah. Taking in and out. Exactly. Eventually, the numbers will all be correct, but it's the content that we are uh, working with. Yeah. Okay. That's what your concern was with the. It, it's really not even the kind. It just refers you to like blasting when it's supposed well, to be referring you to F, the accessory yeah, buildings right. or something. But I'll email you know what it's I found point, to. It's pointing in the wrong direction. Right. Exactly. Right. Just an error. That's all. Yeah. So we still want to leave that as March 27. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just verbiage. It's, it's just verbiage that has to be changed. Right. Right. So you just circle. It's a 7.2 F. In-laws, now we have to change all of those letters because we took that one out. What would you say? You said no K or J. Yeah. Yeah. And that changes everything, too. Okay. Automotive sales. Dave, would you uh, like to explain this one? Well, the um, 7.6B2 says, in no event shall a business or use referred to in this section be established if any part of the proposed building or structure will be within 1,000 feet of any entrance to a public park or playground, school, college, place of worship, public library, 
or residentially zoned dwelling on the same side of the street. So you can't have a gas station in Stafford. Correct. 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 And in, in fact, you can't even alter or expand a gas station in Stafford. So, so really, the sort of the big Y application was sort of DOA, and mm -hmm. I missed it. Mm -hmm. um, what about Cumberland Farms? Well, well that's, that's that's the, the issue thing. that's in front of us. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's a couple houses around that within a thousand feet. So um, there's a church. There's yeah. Dave and I talked about that, and we were working with a, with a number of 100 feet of the entrance to a public park or playground. Period. When you think, yeah. In fact, uh, David had to take that com comma out on the rewrite there. It's one comma zero zero. That's all. You see it? Um, and the number two there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just circled that. Did you want to discuss that further, or you understand what, where that is coming from? Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't really talk about gasoline sales, you know, it talks about service stations, So typically mm -hmm. a gas station mm -hmm. 30 years ago was a service station, mm -hmm. but, you know, now they're convenience stores, accessory to a gasoline sales. Mm -hmm. uh, Most of the places in town that have. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I heard the argument from somebody who wanted to develop a gas station that it's, it's retail, selling gas is retail. No. And especially because we have a whole section in our regulations that mm -hmm. talks about service stations and gasoline sales, that obviously it's something that... Well, most of the service stations in town were attached to either the house or the mm -hmm. just once in a row, and just residents right on the same property. So I'm not sure what the intent of this thousand feet was. I think that's been there for years, to <clears throat> the truth. Can we look at number seven? Yeah. yeah. Were there, was there something else you wanted to change in there? Which one's that one? Number seven in the unload of sales. It's the location within 200 feet. I've got maybe a 50 feet of any residential structure, not dwelling. Did you want to change that, maybe, or no? Um, sure, I'm happy to do whatever you want. Well, I don't know, Dave. I think... You want to make the, um... Number seven. Yeah. Let's think about this. Let's think this out here. There should be no exits or entrances closer than 100 feet to any road intersection nor shall there be any business or uses referred to in this section proposed for location within 200 feet of any residential dwelling you want to bring structure. The 200 feet in? Change the 200 feet? I couldn't put a farm stand within 70 feet. So it's, two, it's 200 up. feet from the dwelling, dwelling. not from <coughs> the property. Did you want to make it structure? I did change that, but I got, I didn't do the red. I'm going to get rid of the dwelling now. What? Get rid of Dwelling, dwelling to structure. structure. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know. Is that, does that change it, really? Well, sure. We'd say any residential dwelling structure. Dwelling implies people. <coughs> so it wouldn't, so count, it wouldn't the, count a garage. Right. Mm -hmm. So go back to the, the 200 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet. What do you think? Um, well, 200 feet is probably excessive, isn't it? I think it's a little excessive. What? 50? It's 52 too little. Is that too little? I think so. 100? Structure is impersonal. Uh, 100 feet to any road intersection. Well, that's just for a traffic. Right. For location, proposed for location within. Yeah, for an intersection, you'd have to have a site line clearance right, anyway. Right. So, really so this is automotive sales and repair, service garage, and gasoline stations. How many of those are going to be permitted, though, near a residential district? Well, there's several right now. Right? Yeah. 
Oh, they're all yes. Yes. Uh, yes. anywhere in anywhere in town. You're going to be within thousand feet yeah. of yeah. those structures. But is that what we want in the future? Also, though? not a thousand feet. That's, that's excessive. Right. That's really excessive. Yeah. Well, you do have to still go through for the service stations, has to go to the ZBA. Right. And then they would need a DOT. But they come to us for a gasoline sale. It right. doesn't have to go to the ZBA. They come to us, but we still get to permit the location separately from the site plan requirements, just like the ZBA does now. We do that for gasoline sales. So that gives you a little to say, oh, it's right next to a church. You can't do that. Right? So, <coughs> you know, 50 is too little, 200 is too much. Yeah, I think 100, 100 of any residential dwelling structure is probably okay. Okay, so 100. And, and, and you want to insert the word structure? I like that's the dwelling these people. Yeah. I mean, a house could be a structure, too, but right. you're covering more. That was my only so question. So we call it residential dwelling structure? Yeah. yeah. No, not no. dwelling structure. Just yeah. residential structure. structure. Just residential structure. Right. No dwelling, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. would you like to put this... Um, and then it was added to the uh, schedule of permitted main uses, yep. gasoline sales. If the commission is okay with this, Doug, uh, we can put it on to the 27th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you do with that? And let's see. I don't think, do you have any more new proposals? No, I thought of one, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay, new and other business, I guess, in your packet, you found that um, we have been um, served notice of a lawsuit. Um, I, was looking, I had a comment on the paper, though, on that one you were just on. All right, let's go back. I'm sorry. Uh, what? On what? Do, do you not want to define how many vehicles damage can be stored on the property? Well, we are, I mean, which one are you on the? Number uh, eight. Eight under the. Uh, under, under what's? Well, at the top sheet of it. The the uh, on the automotive? On the automotive, yeah. Oh, okay. Except for newer used auto sales operations. Is that what you're talking yep. about? Vehicles parked or stored, stored on the premises for periods exceeding 10 days are all damaged vehicles on the premises. When you put the word all in, you could have 100. Do you want to define how many you can put on that piece of property behind a fence? Otherwise, you're going to have a, re a huge repair shop. Okay. <laughs> now, I understand what you're saying, definitely. Um, so the state makes you put up a buffer in it, right? Defense? No, we had to remember with... with no, they don't well, you'd be operating a junkyard at that point, right? That's right. It's a junkyard. So you, you can't but operate you can't a junkyard without a permit, and it has to be in the right zone. And from the... Well... And yeah. the junkyard is actually yeah. not permitted anymore. And the, no. They're not permitted in the state of Connecticut. It hasn't been for years. Is that right? Yeah. You're right. You're operating a junkyard, but... What you're doing is leaving yourself wide open of how many constitute the junkyard then. Well, I, I, what I guess you're saying is if there's an accident, say it's an auto sales operation, there's an accident and <coughs> they, they bring it to the garage and it's damaged and, you know, they tow it to the garage. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, but if, he's, if it's a body shop and they're working with all kinds of insurance companies, you're waiting for the insurance company to come. We could have right. 20, 20 vehicles out there waiting for estimates. Right. And when you go to the back of Moles, they got carnage all over the place back there. But it's moving constantly. I understand what you're saying, and also it has to be fenced. So 
it, it's not a um, it's not a, a blight ordinance issue because it has to be fenced. The only thing is it, it may become an environmental issue. Is that what you're thinking? Well, that's, that's part of it, but I don't know. If you're going to leave it there a year, you're going to leave it there two years, these vehicles piled up, whatever, while you're waiting for parts no, or no parts. I've been working on a 68 Camaro for 12 years. <laughs> yeah, that's in your garage. How old is it now? <laughs> <laughs> and now i got to cut the birch tree out of it. I'm just saying, I, don't, I, th I think you need a limit on, on how many they can store. And one spot well, and before it a junkyard. It also <laughs> depends on what area That's right. of the lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't put a hundred cars in a to make a lot. I don't think it's been an issue in hasn't been an issue. I'm aware. But I uh, I don't want to I don't want to pinpoint anything. I don't really want to be responsible for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Eight under the automotive section. I just don't know how we could determine a number based on the size of the operation, Doug. That's my issue. Yeah, you put the size of the lot, like Dickies, opposed to some place like on one staff of them. It's not a quarter acre, but then you've got more than mm -hmm. that. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I don't know if I want to touch it. Well, I don't think we need to touch it. We don't? Okay. I agree. You no, that's agree? Just, that's just... Yeah. I'm just wondering. You agree? Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So, let's get back to the lawsuit. <coughs> I think they just named you. Uh, no, they had the Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Stafford. This was not you just me this time. <laughs> you could be no, a representative. Not just me this time. Um, Andrea Eldridge is the plaintiff in 27 Stafford Street. And she has listed um, A through J issues that she had with our approving the application for the Milikowski's Farm Market. Um, Nancy, if I could just interrupt first. Mm -hmm. First of all, on a procedural matter, mm -hmm. um, this lawsuit is subject to a motion to dismiss because she's 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 um, indicated it's. She's serving in the judicial district of Hartford, um, but then she's named Helen County. County right. So and she's got the date here, Tuesday of February, 2018. On the Tuesday of February. Right, Tuesday of February, 2018. And this, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this isn't served yet because in Connecticut you file the complaint first and then you serve it, so that's going to have to be sorted out. It's well, been he's served. been working on it. Been it's served. been served. Yeah. So in Hartford or Helen. <laughs> well, what's, uh, that's why you need to update well, us what's going on. should have known this, no? This guy here? Yes, he should have known that. Mike Shipman, yeah. So, um, bring us up to, to snuff here. So, I, so we've, retained, um, we've retained Mark Grants to um, represent us. Mm -hmm. um, I've sent the tape out for a transcription. Um, we're hoping that the Milikowskis will file an intervener status and protect their interest because our interest is we don't really need to spend a whole lot of money to protect their interest. It is an approved application. It is a special permit that if they file it, it's a special permit. Um, if somebody moves to stay that order, um, they could do that, but the order would be in a, I mean, the special permit will be in effect. Um, so they'd have to make a motion to block that. And that's with use. In the courts? They would do yeah. that in the courts. Okay. And, and certainly, they, did, did, she, did she not get a card where it says failed to list a plaintiff as an abutting owner? She was on the list of certified males, right. yeah. Well, looking through it, I, I, I really... I mean, we, I, did, we did not, you know, make our findings like we did tonight. I mean, we may have had some technical defects, but nothing that I think a judge could really throw us I agree, because I think the record, the record includes, you know, all of these considerations, so... 
Has um, Mark Brands looked at this yet? Mm -hmm. Has he given you any sort of preliminary opinion? No, because he wants to see the transcript, and, okay. and he'd like he'd like the um, the interveners to take care of most of the work. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, we shouldn't be asking the Milikowskis to, to pay. I mean, that, that, they're, that's going to create sure. significant legal expenses for them, too. Yeah, they've been approved. Whatever. I mean, obviously, that's, you know, that's something that they can talk with Mark France about. So, Cindy, you're, you're an attorney, and Dave, you, you worked many a time with this lawsuit. I thought that Mark France would just represent us in court and present our side. So what's this intervener? Well, he's got a right. He's got a right. I mean, what's our what's our interest as a commission? Somebody, somebody. Right. Um, well, I think our interest is to uphold a decision yeah, that we made. Uphold. In fact, right. the very I first uphold. decision we've ever made under these new farm rights. Right. I think I think we've got a great deal of interest in yeah. in in upholding our decision. Well, we'll have to. Right. But I thought there was a date. Yeah, the twenty seventh of February is the court date. Okay. So, um, depending on, well, that's just an appearance. I don't know. Do they make a decision right no. away? No. 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 So. No, and this will get you know referred to the land use docket, or else uh -huh. it'll stay in, stay in Tolland and be behind. Everybody else. Okay. Are you sure the twenty seventh isn't the return date it's the for return the summons? Right? So there's there's no appearance then. That's just the return oh, it's not. date. It's an appearance to me. Yeah, that's just the entering. return date to submit the documentation of the service of the summons, and then okay. something will be scheduled after. After that. So there's no appearance okay. required on the twenty seventh. Well, well, no, it says to appear before the superior court for the. Yeah, this, this, this is incorrect, yeah. Nancy. To be held, huh? This is incorrect. Look how incorrect this is. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why. But it, when it said that, immediately, because I got it, and I thought, Dave, I said, do I have to go to court February 27th? They said, no. 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 So, but that's what it says to appear <clears throat> at court on the 27th. I mean, we're just getting, you know, into it. Right. 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 Yeah. And this, this will be two years before. Yeah, we'll have, a couple, years we'll have a couple seasons of right. these. Yeah. Right. In the uh, initial Great. statement, where where it comes to on the Tuesday of February twenty eighth, did they leave a the date out? I right think chance? so. Yeah, yeah I Tuesday, do too. February twenty eighteen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they left the date out. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, this is just really sloppy. Very sloppy. Do you know this lawyer? I do not. You do not. I do not. I looked him up online. He graduated from law school in nineteen sixty two. I, th I think I'd send oh, back. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd send them back a note and it's over in your car. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I want to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just file this away, and yeah. then just wanted to make sure you all got a copy of it. And uh, but yeah, yeah, if you could keep us informed yeah. as to yeah. uh, you know where this is procedurally, and I just think it's a shame because it's really costing the taxpayers money for a lawyer. Yep. Absolutely. When I do believe we've done our job. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> you asked for it. That's nice. Is that, I thought they didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah, this they want to do it at the gas station, but look what they're doing with the sign. You had to work them up. <laughs> I'll work them up. I'll work them up. <laughs> So you'll be seeing this pretty soon. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nice. What is that? It's a new big white gas station. Oh. So that's not, there's no convenience store in there. No, right? that was, no, no yes, it's, it's, there is. No, no but it's no. identical to what they have. Oh, the, no, the little. No, you don't even go, you don't even go in. No, you, yeah. you have a drawer it's, and that's it. It's a drawer, like they do at Stop yes. and Shop yeah, and all right. of those, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like something you see in the print. Is that going to be the golf like they're Why? talking in Linda? Beautiful. Oh, yes, I love it. <laughs> so, they also, I've been working with the. Um, Is that going to be too red for your book? <laughs> <laughs> I've been working with the property next to Basil's. Uh, Basil's, yes. That was 
have a uh, a okay. to it. That's yeah. George's place. <laughs> this building over here. Yeah. What's happening? You know the uh so they they, the um, they cut it's down all these trees and they made a retention basin back here and they piped in all the leaders into this retention basin that didn't have any overflow or outlets or anything mm -hmm. and it flooded this guy back here. So the water goes like all the way back here. We also determined that this line was the survey property line that George used for years. And this guy decided this line was wrong. And they went and they resurveyed it and found that the line actually goes like this. So George is losing like 40 feet back here of parking. So we've created this plan that takes care of the water situation by putting it all in the back here in the piping. We've um, going to pave the front here and do some landscaping. This parking over here will be for basils, even though it's on his property because he owns both of them. Mm -hmm. And Sean back here is going to give an easement to basils to park cars on his property. Basils is over here. Basils is over here. Okay. This is a double. Yep. And where's, where's the, where's the self storage? Right here. All right, so Nowinski's house is here? Yep. Yeah. There's a common driveway yep. here in to the, come in the back here. Okay. So people will, people will come in this way and this is one way here. You can't drive this way. So you can go in, pull in, back out, back out again. And Prue is going to have his um, wife's um, beauty parlor. Oh, um, yeah. In one of them. Mm -hmm. And so this will be paved in the front. And then you drive in here and park back here and come in the building this way. Or you can drive out to Basil's and park in here in the nighttime. So this is the That's gravel the, area right now between Basil's and... This Lewis. is all going to be millings. Yeah, but this is the overflow now where they park. Correct. Yeah, okay. yeah there's a telephone pole that's it's like right about here. Yeah. Also the highway to the road. Um, yeah. Okay. So I've been so, working with them for like, well, since they started flooding this guy and they cut all the trees down. Mm -hmm. They never came for a minute before they built it. George is. Yeah, that's George. But anyway, um, now you're saying they're only going to go this way. But they're What's to keep them from going? Right. What's to keep it's them from be, doing that? It's going to be signage. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, right. As if that worked for the co-op. Well, these people, you don't thing? really come in this way anyway. These guys all go back here. You come in this way. The sign's going to be over here for the business. No, what I'm saying is there's nothing to deter them here. There's nothing Correct, and there's nothing to deter them from going this way also. So we got signs over here because right. I'm worried about these guys coming through and yeah. the, the drugs coming through. So That's we've, really we've done some striping and stuff. Your profile. This is not good. <laughs> no, but this like is all it. paid, so we can like we can stripe it somehow. Do not enter one way only. Right on the pavement. Just like they say at Dunkin' Donuts, don't yeah. do not enter. <laughs> Everybody enters. Right. No, no. I I don't think that's gonna work, Dave. It's gonna we gotta have something to stop that. Because as you said, the the, the, the traffic's going every which way. Well, don't you think? It's going well, every which way. You are working with them now, right, Dave? Yeah. It's not uh, So you get a above ground propane tank right by your parking lot, by your parking? You couldn't you could get George to bury that tank? Those three dollars? Yeah. They actually have it in a different place. It went there once already, and it's acceptable, it's it's acceptable to the, um, to the fire marshal. Right next to parking. Are those bollards on the front? Yes. 
Why don't they have one on each side, though? Like, right there and right, right. there. <laughs> well, I passed it by the fire marshal and... He was happy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He, he was over here. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, this looks so confusing, doesn't it, for, for the flow of traffic? Well, it's not, it's Is not this as, final? It's not as bad as it looks. Okay, is this a final draft? They gotta come to us, or? No, they don't have to come no, to you. really. It's approval. This was, um, yeah, a week ago. Yeah, the last revision was, um, on the 7th. So that's... Oh, well, he's already done the additional, so I will we'll just continue. Well, it's not good. I mean, the whole, you know, he wants to rent it. And I don't know about it. So this so is a whole lot better than it is oh, right now. Yeah. So you can, um... Where's the handicap? One. Well, he had three more parking spaces right up here, Rob. Right. No, I know. I'd, I'd use right it. up to the road. So he has one handicap. That's not enough to come out of this. Sure. Sure. So this is how you get out of it. At the yeah. cross edge. Yeah. And, and this would be the walk into the restaurant. But this this parking lot is built not for right. Um, for basis. This from here back is basis. Mm. This is basils too, right? Yes. This is here. Yeah. And you're looking at this that way. Yeah. That's that's. And that's and that is not for the <coughs> decay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I heard him say it's a walkway. I think it's a walkway. Walk well, there should be a handicap sign here. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a walkway. It's I a walkway. Walk I think it's a walkway to get into the park. Uh huh. What do you do? Go across the grass or whatever it's, this is? Yeah. That's all landscape, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, this isn't big enough. For grass. What is isn't, that? That isn't big enough for handicap. It's not wide enough. No. What is that? I wonder. I think it's supposed to be a handicap, but it's not wide enough. I, I don't think so. I think. Well, where do you walk to then? It's just pretty weeds. A bark uh, mulch bed. Yeah. There's another one over here. Mm -hmm. With no curbing, yeah. so you're just going to put mark. Well, that's, that that was part of my whole concept today because there's no curbing. <coughs> this is all milling, so right. he's got to come up with some sort of like a, a fence or a landscape timber oh. or or something to <laughs> stop <laughs> stop. Well, you've got you've got a concrete curb here. Yeah. That goes into nothing. But there's no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Okay. You're just going to put piles of mulch here and just let the water. There's no legend for tell you what that is. That's no right right here. Here. That's, uh, that's, that's different. That's different. That's, different one, right? that's brick. Or uh, whatever it is. Bark, bark mulch bed. Where is it? I don't even see it. Right here. Bark oh, mulch bed. That's it's not that. No. Oh. No. There's no legend for that. And what is this? That's part of the shared easement thing. Let me see if there's one legend back here. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Dave, you've had some fun, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Mm, that and then a bathroom. <laughs> walk right <way> to nowhere. <laughs> well, there's a few things you can look over with them, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no As you said, if they mark that corner well, down there with something, oh, so that'll no, alleviate no. a problem. No, that's a hash for the van. Yeah. That's not big enough. Yeah. There's no handicap sign on either side of that. All right. There's no legend for that either. You're just guessing at it. <coughs> well, I mean, Russo had to draw it for something. It didn't just appear on the blank paper. Well, it wasn't big enough for a parking area, so I filled it in. <laughs> right? Well, maybe, well, that's an existing light pole. Maybe that's protection for the light pole, so nobody parks there? Yeah, there's there is a light pole what's there. That, next to her? that legend is a... Right here, isn't that it? That's a catch basin. Yeah. And, all right, so this this cup would be pitching the water into that catch basin. Yeah. yeah. Drainage here, here, to here. I don't know what it is. 
So that's protected. I think there is a, that's a light there. Yeah. But th there is a pole here. I think there is something here. There's a pole with a guy here coming down. But he's using the same symbol as he was is for a handicap. And neither one of them are to find. Well, it just seems like that, that's protection for that pole, but without a dollar here, mm -hmm. like you have here, what do you got for protection? All it is is you're just you're aiming for it. Well, that's a good question to ask them, honey. We've been going round and round and round. Definitely. This has been months, right? Yeah. Months. So I would say, find out what these are. And this needs another bollard. One there and one there. That's early. Scary right there. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a uh, marking. Right now, they just have a couple little um, tiny mafia blocks in front of them. Mafia blocks? <laughs> you mean they took the car over? Jersey barriers. Jersey barriers. They took the car over, right? <laughs> um, but that's what, a 500 gallon tank? I always use Yukon. But it's not a 1,000 gallon tank. It's not that big. It's not like the one back here. Well, I think you done an excellent job getting this this far. Or they didn't even have a site plan. They had nothing. I just would have shut them down. They did. <laughs> they did. Yeah. And so, but they're going to give him that, this owner is going to give him that piece of land? No, it's an easement. And then he gets an easement, he gets an easement back, so if he ever wants to use this, he can drain this way. I mean, there's a whole easement layout I can send for you. Mm. No, that's not no. a couch basin. No. That's just the a manhole. 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 Okay. Yeah. Catch basin here, here, and here. These three. And, then it's just... and these all have, have perforated bottoms. Mm -hmm. So by the time the water gets down here, it's not going to be anything left. Yeah. This is all these. That's all sand in here. This yeah. thing is sand. But from here all the way to the credit is all sand. Is there anything else there? No. Okay. I have one more thing. The budget. Mm -hmm. What have we decided to, um, are we going to separate ours from the building department? We can do that. Okay. Um, when you had given me a proposed budget, um, we, right now we're combining building and zoning. And um, actually, Jing, uh, the she's the chairman of the um, finance. They've been working on procedures, and what they want to see is each department has their budget so that they can follow. So she was thinking about that, and she called me, and I called Dave, and and he gave me this um, what we are combining now, and what really could be just us, and what can has to stay. With combined with the building department, so it got a little confusing. So she called Mary Mitta, and uh, the first select woman was also agreeable, thought it, that she would like to have each department have their own line items so that we can track uh, where we are at. And if we, we need to, if we have any money over, maybe we can even encumber, wouldn't that be nice, etc. So um, right now, the salaries are per contract together with the building and zoning the uniforms. So we can't separate that. So I guess that would you go with the building that you would have to work out with. Well, we can separate that. You can separate half and half. OK. Uh, legal services are just what we use. And then we estimated 5,000, Dave did. Do you still think that's relative to what just happened enough? No. No. I think we probably we already spent that. Well, we've got 5000 in legal and we've got 5000 in consulting. Yeah, but we may need consulting, too, at some point. Well, you don't have a POCD on the horizon. Right. You don't no, really have anything major going on. Major. So you really can move that money right. back and forth when we need to. But we only have 2000 in the consultant, so that's a total of seven. So maybe we should make it five and five. 
because the five, as you indicate, is not enough. Well, where are you going to pull the five from? Uh, no, this is a proposed budget to go to the Board of Finance. We can't get postage out of them. We're going to get $5,000. <laughs> yeah, could you put postage back in? No, I guess there's an, see, everyone has its own account, so the postage has its own account. Actually, Every, speaking, speaking of budget items, could we do something to get an easel in here? These these poor I applicants, yeah. when they're fumbling I, around I, on a yeah, window, so, we lost it's so it. unprofessional. We lost but can't we, can't we buy an easel? Or something that I was talking to Laura, and she has to buy her own little pads to write on. They can't, okay. and it's, we're at a freeze. I looked, I looked at. Yes, we'll get an easel. Okay. <laughs> you looked no, into. I, mean, I is, looked high and low. Really I looked high and low for it today for like an right. hour. Yeah. Right. And I and he showed up, and I said, you know, I hope you brought an easel because I couldn't find money. He goes, oh, no, I love that window. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so GIS mapping for a thousand. That's just us, isn't it? Really. It's not the building department, is it? Like, should we put that under our own? It's it's. Um, but isn't that mandated by CROP? The you know, they haven't really been charging us anything. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of changes and stuff. And, and um, um, so it's just there. It's just earmarked for CROP if they do charge us, and they haven't been. Well, I used it. I used it last year to buy my. GIS software mm -hmm. because the money was there. Right. Um, well, it makes sense. But we've the assessor sends in the updates and they've just been doing it. I mean, there are so few of them. That, yeah. And really, they just take her file and and process mm -hmm. it. So, like on the fees for the copier, we take half of that figure of fourteen. We just throw that all in together because yeah, we probably off. use more of it than they do. Okay. So I, I guess then um, I guess then then we'll go with the the board of finance chair and, and the select woman would like to to at least present just a zoning budget. Right. Zoning well, there's a budget. meeting on the eighth or something. And the seventh, I believe. Yeah, yeah. the seventh. Do you need any anything else from us except? Um, these figures that are on here are <coughs> to go with. You don't want to increase anything. No, I think the five and five is probably good for the consultant and the legal and. Okay, because it's five and. Yeah, two. I think I, I cut think it five, down. But... I think five and five, because they may cut us. So. Well, and you're gonna have to spend the legal fees. No matter what. Right? No matter what. The lawyers are always good. Right. Okay, so I'm, we don't need a motion or anything. It's just I wanted for your information. It was requested that we separate. So I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other further business? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone.